What's going on, Phil? They're playing our song, aren't they? They are. They are. It's a good thing we're not in the same room. You'd have to link arms and do a little dance together. <laughs> you, you wouldn't do that with me, hey. would you? No, no, I don't think so. Not yet. I love you, but not that much. Hey, I did hear you say, though, when I tuned in, that you said you were going to start listening to me this year. Did I hear that right? I was hoping you weren't you listening that right. at that very moment, but unfortunately, I guess you did. I was being, <laughs> you ought to know by now. We've worked together five years, I think, five longest years of my life. And you haven't figured out when I'm being sarcastic and when I'm being truthful about things. Come on, man. I thought I, I thought you knew me better than that. Well, you do listen to me. You just It's kind of like my wife. You listen, and then you just do what you want to do. That's and right. You don't ever agree with me. <laughs> but I'm not cute So we all kind of like that marriage. <laughs> you, I've heard Bubba use the line of, well, she can't cook, but she's really cute when she tries. He's not going to use the same line about me, even though this is still an arranged marriage. Uh, no, no. I don't so. think so. <laughs> Bubba, I want to ask you about expectations. And, and not necessarily, like, what do you expect about Arkansas baseball this year? I, I have difficulty sometimes like not going into the season with the expectations that it's Omaha or bust just because of where the program is and and the, the talent that you know is there and the coaching staff that you have and just everything going on around the program right now. Now I don't I look at last season still as a successful year, even though they didn't get to Omaha, but I think last year might be one of those you know, kind of seasons where that might be the only way, the only one where you could look at it like that. Do you go into every season expecting Omaha? Well, I'm hoping for Omaha. I don't expect it every year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, last year I wasn't sure. I wasn't expecting it last year. Um, but the way the guys played, they came together, the Kevin Cobb story, everything, I mean, it was awesome. You know, and I think there's so many different, like, expectations. When you talk... I'll give you an example. I texted I texted Robert Moore a couple of days ago and said, hey, I'm getting ready to go in the air. You got anything good for me? And he said, yeah, the parade will be in July. <laughs> and, that's great. And look, that's not Robert being arrogant, and that's not bulletin board material. That's what these guys believe. And if you don't believe that, you're playing in the wrong town. You know, don't come here if you don't, if that's not what you believe. And, you know, and then you look at like DVH, his, his expectations, you know, he wants to keep everyone healthy, uh, play the game the right way, because he knows if he does those things and play Razorback baseballs, great chance they're going to be at Omaha. You know, I think the fans expectations is Omaha bust. you know, it really is. And there were a lot of people way down last year at the end of the season. And there was a lot of the Twitter stuff. I, I stayed off Twitter for a while because Everyone's bashing these guys for for losing the NC State, and I'm like guys, we just had one of the best seasons in Razorback history. I mean, to, to win every series in the SEC, won the SEC tournament, won the SEC title, you know, one game away from going to Omaha. That's an unbelievable season um, for a team that wasn't really picked to do that. Um, you know, so I think sometimes the fans' expectations are a re- little uh, unrealistic. But I mean, we still have the best fans in the world. Um, but still, they, you know, it's just uh, sometimes it's not realistic. There's so many things that have to go right for a team to make it to Omaha. The best team doesn't always get there, as, you know, and, and we've seen it in the past. Yeah, Bubba, and, and we're about eight. We're eight days away from the first game of the season, and if those expectations are going to be met, you know, I think there are still even there is a lot of question marks around this team, of especially in, in, in pitching. So. Here's my question to you, basically fill in the blank. Arkansas gets to Omaha if blank works out. Wow. Dude, that's a tough one right there. Um, if if our pitching staff comes together, I'll say that because we are going to score a bunch of runs. This offense is, is electric. Um, you know, look at Kevin Cobb's last year. I hate to keep going back to Kevin because that's in the past, but look at statistically speaking, he was – probably the worst pitcher on the team in 2020. He had a season like no pitcher's ever going to have again in 2021. So you never know who's going to step up. But I think some guys have to step up. So I don't know if I can fill in your one blank with one word. Um, you know, but I think some guys have to step up uh, in, on the pitching side of it. You know, um, I would like to say and make it simple to say if everyone can stay healthy. Uh, but, you know, I think it's more complicated than that. I think we've got some guys that have the, the stuff to get us to Omaha. Uh, they just need to figure it out. 
And so I, I think that's kind of the big piece of it, Drew, is, is getting everything to come together. And look, look, I, I say it every year, DVH is the master of putting that puzzle together and putting guys in the right spot. Um, and I think they're going to figure it out. And, uh, you know, I'm super excited about this year. I'm an offensive guy. I love to see offense. Uh, and there's so much talent on this team. It's ridiculous. I know I kind of got sidetracked and avoid that's kind of the uh, politically correct way to answer that question. Um, but I I think you see where I'm going. Yeah, I know. I see where you're going with it. Well, Bubba, I want, so there's, there's, there's obviously like what a pitching staff can do for a team statistically and just shutting a team down and all that. But there's a, there's a mental aspect to having a good pitching staff. There's an emotional aspect to that. Cause you know what it's like to be in a dugout and you're looking out of the bullpen and you're like, Oh, it's the sixth thing we got to lead. We got, we got our guys lined up, ready to go. And that just instills this confidence in you when you know that, Heck, four runs can be enough to win a to win a ball game, and there's not a lot of teams that you can say that about. And last year's team wasn't necessarily that you know week in week out. A good pitching staff, and I think they're going to score a ton of runs. But Bubba winning like nine to eight or or eight to six or eight to five on a routine basis, there's a roller coaster aspect to that. You want to win, but I feel like a pitching staff really helps stabilize a team more so than a good lineup does. Well, I agree. Phil, believe it or not, I agree with you. What? You know, you had that I, recorded, right? <laughs> Good. We'll, we'll pull the tape. I, I really do agree with you. I've played on teams before that offensively were really good, but we worried, you know, secretly we talked about the pitching staff. Oh, well, we better score. We better throw up in a uh, 10 spot today if we want to win. So-and-so's on the mound, you know, but I, I don't – I. It, I think the talent's there. I really do. Man, we've got some unbelievable – we've got some freshman studs in here that don't pitch like freshmen. And then we've got some veteran guys. I think a couple of the veteran guys out of the pen is going to have to step up. But but I really think when, when I've talked to the, the guys, they're confident. They're confident in their staff. Now, look, Peyton Paulette losing him, who's probably going to be our Friday night guy, that's a giant gut punch. But, you know, Dave Van Horn and the staff has built this team to, to withstand injuries. You know, now can you withstand a, a couple more big ones like that? I don't know, um, but but that they're built for the next guy to step up, and there's guys waiting right now to step up and 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 take Peyton's spot, and and I think someone will do it. I really do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it does kind of feel like there might be some of this win by committee type of stuff going on. You know, where you uh, go to your bullpen a little bit earlier, and you might use uh, a few more guys than you probably would want to. But it, with this somewhat of a pitching by community uh, aspect that this team may have at the the end of the season, as far as a team ERA goes, what number do you think it has to be below for Arkansas to have success? Because they're going to score a lot of runs. So I think you can afford to give up a little bit more than what you would like. So like, what's the bar that you have to be below to, to kind of guarantee the success? Man, you know, I'm going to do it to you again, Drew. I I don't think you can put a number on that just because there's so much talent out there in the SEC right now, and there's so many good arms. I mean, you look at some of these Friday night guys, uh, you're you're not going to score a lot of runs. As good as we are, as athletic as we are, as as good as this lineup's going to be, there's nights we're not going to score a lot of Mm -hmm. runs. Um, You know, I think the key is just, you know, kind of kind of by committee, like you said, whether we use an opener and he he gets us three innings and then we go from there. I just think the key is getting some of these other guys to step up and go out and do a job for us. Um, And and, then the talent is there. And then once they figure it out, I think we're going to be in good shape. So um, let me let me sit down and put put some pen to paper and I'll come up with a number for you next time I'm on I'll give you that number but you know I just don't think I think baseball is one of those games you just can't Mm -hmm. assign a a, a number to it but I I really think the arms are there to do what we we want to do and I'll tell you I talked to Matt Jones a couple days ago and and he it it disgusted me I love Matt Jones to death but he put us and and he kind of compared us to Ole Miss last year having to win 10-9 games Mm -hmm. 9-8 you know stuff like that and but he's unfortunately, you know, going into the season, that's that's the expectation of people is we're going to have to outscore everybody. But but my glass is always half full, as you know, Phil. And and I think I think we got the guys in the pen. I tell you what, we got the best pitching coach in the country um, that can bring these guys together. And I think they're going to get it done for us. 
Yeah, Bubba, you mentioned how talented the SEC is. I mean, regardless of how you feel about the SEC in general, I don't think anybody can deny that baseball in the SEC is absolutely dominant. So who do you think is the biggest contender to keep Arkansas from going back-to-back as, as SEC champions? Is it the defending national champions in Starkville? Is it Mike Bianco and Ole Miss? Is it the guys in LSU? Is it... Um, Tennessee is it, is, or is there even a dark horse out there that I'm not thinking of right now? You know, right now I'm looking at Mississippi State and they're they're tough. I mean, I think that's going to be the team the team to beat. You know, right now, you know, they're coming off a national championship, um, a lot of guys back. You know, and, and and Drew, the thing is, this transfer portal, these six year seniors because of the COVID years, that's changed baseball. I mean. Uh, it really has. Now, it's, it's, it's really helped. The teams in the SEC has really benefited from the transfer portal. But I think it's kind of changed college baseball to where, I mean, these teams are just loaded right now. You look at the Razorback roster, and I mean, we got guys that are going to sit on the bench. Well, they'll come off and they'll get some at-bats, but they get starts for just about any other team in the country, and, and they're going to have a hard time cracking this lineup. And, then, you know, that's kind of the nature of the game right now. But I think Mississippi State right now is the team to beat. I can't give Ole Miss any props because they'll figure out a way to blow it. Um but, yeah, I think I, I'm looking at Mississippi State and thinking that's a good team. LSU, too, they got a ton of talent. So there's there's several teams that can step up. Florida's good. Um, you know, can't overlook Vandy ever. So, I mean, there's just uh, there's a bunch of teams. But I would put Mississippi State probably at the top of that, that pile. Uh, Hagan Smith is, is probably the freshman pitcher that could have the biggest impact on this team. You think that's fair to say, or is there anyone else that you think might uh, might get that same opportunity? And maybe I I think Hagen Smith, from what I watched in the fall, his stuff is just ridiculous. You notice at the moment he throws the ball. You could say that about a lot of pitchers, but there was something about the way he threw it. And I thought, man, this is this looks really special. Are there other freshmen you think that could have an impact? Yeah, I think so. Um, but on the on the Hagen, you know, I talked to Michael Turner, who's, who's the transfer from Kent State is probably going to be the starting catcher. And, you know, Michael was talking about him. He said, look, this guy's got the stuff to pitch in the big leagues right now. Now, obviously, I mean, that's a huge statement. And, you know, and I asked, I asked Michael, I said, hey, I'm, I'm going to tell, tell people that. He's like, no, that's fine. He said, he's got the stuff. And he doesn't pitch like a freshman. Um, but he's just, he's just ridiculous. His, the arm he's got, just a, a three-quarter arm slot, mid-90s fastball, a, a plus change-up. His slider slider's probably his third pitch, and it's still a really good pitch. But uh, another guy that's not a freshman that we've talked a lot about in the past is Connor Nolan. Mm-hmm. Um, Connor Nolan's added a cutter. And I'm telling you, that, that cutter's changed him as a pitcher. Um because when you're a two seam, his two seam still his best pitch. But when you're a two seam cutter guy, you can basically, as a hitter, you've got to split the plate in half and either look middle in or middle out. Uh, you can't cover the whole plate, and if you guess wrong, you're out. And so him learning that cutter, and, that, and I've I've heard he's just been carving guys up, uh, making them look really bad in the scrimmages. So I think uh, I, I think he's. Uh, He's got Friday night stuff now. I wouldn't have said that last year, and I love Connor Nolan, but I think he's a different pitcher now. But a freshman that that I really like is Moulton, Nick Moulton. Um, really good stuff. He's a guy we're going to see a lot of. Another mid nineties guy, uh, fastball slider change. Brady Tigers, a three quarter arm guy, really good stuff. Uh, above ninety five, up to ninety six miles an hour. Uh, there's there's several. There's Austin Ledbetter, another guy. Are you just wanting one fill, or you want me to give you a bunch of the good ones? Because there's a bunch get ev- of them. Give everybody, man. Go ahead and get them all. <laughs> info. Austin Ledbetter is a guy that, that was a two sport guy. Most of the people in the state have heard of him. A quarterback from Bryant. Um, he's used to the big stage. He's a guy that's going to get some innings, I think, this year. Whether it's on a Tuesday night or coming and get a few outs. He doesn't. Throw, he doesn't have the fastball as some of these other guys. But he's got a four pitch mix, and he can throw them for strikes. Um, Jake Barry. I tell you, is uh, he'll be the first to hit a hundred probably. His fastball's up to ninety eight, um, just unbelievable stuff. Uh, I think he's a, another freshman that's gonna that's gonna see some innings this year. If he once he learns to command his stuff, he's gonna be special. So there's there's so many guys, and and another guy that everyone keeps talking about uh, is Mark Adamiak. Is a completely different pitcher this year. They said he's got as good a stuff as anyone on the staff. 97 98 with a with a with a cutter um just really good stuff and so you know like i said there's the talent's there but 
on the freshman side, I'm really excited about some of these arms that we've had. I don't know that we've had this this kind of group of freshmen, not with just good stuff, but guys that know how to pitch and use that stuff. Well, that's exciting, man. Looking forward to being there with you in the booth on Friday and Saturday next week. i got to miss Sunday for women's basketball, but I know we'll uh, we'll have a lot of fun. I'll give you a couple of inches on your side of the booth, okay? Well, I appreciate it, Phil. Looking forward to it, man. I can't wait. Go on. The big game is finally here as we hit Super Sunday with the last game of the football season. From scored, totals, player performance props, to where the next fired coach is going to land, Bet Online is the number one spot for all things NFL betting in 2022. And with the new year comes a new updated desktop and mobile website. Sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE to get started. That's B L E A V. And it's not just football. Bet Online's basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC odds coverage is the best in the business. From sports right down to your favorite Vegas casino games, Bet Online is your number one online wagering destination. Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports and play your favorite games. Bet Online, where the game starts.